Hello, welcome or welcome back. Today I have a fun design and I tentatively, well I drew out a design that I'm going to follow tentatively. This is kind of what I had in mind. I saw a couple of different pictures of some things I wanted to try while I was scrolling through Pinterest for inspiration because lately I have really, haven't really had a lot of it. So I've just been kind of scrolling to see if anything sparks my imagination. I'm going to be using Dipster's Custom Dips gel polishes today she does sell gel polish more so now she's trying to move away from dips and these polishes are awesome that polish is called pink dragon it is a flake polish it is so so pretty there's pink flakes mixed in the clear gel and you'll see when i put it over the black how pretty it is the black is called your ex's heart and then this uh pink uh glow in the dark is called Flamingo, which kind of a play on the word, but I think it's pretty cool. I will have to throw in a glow picture at the end for you guys so you can see the glow. All right, to start it off, I'm going to be using Peely Base in case this goes completely to the left because I'm going to be doing this on my dominant hand. All right, so I have my, I went ahead and put my Peel Base on off camera because the design in itself is already long enough and I just was like, I'm going to put the Peel Base on off camera. Now the bubble one is a gel peel base and I cure it in my light for 60 seconds. And then I just rub off the, I wipe off the tacky layer and it holds until I want to take it off really. So, <sighs> Lordy, it's hot outside. <laughs> but anyway, it works really good and I really like it. So right now I did, I am just putting the, the black gel polish on. Now, I, I did say the design was like a tentative design because I kind of do the design, but then I kind of switch it up a little bit as I'm going through it. And I kind of just do one nail at a time just because I wasn't quite sure how it was all going to come together because I saw the vision in my head. And then sometimes the vision doesn't like turn out that way. So, I mean... That's another reason why I kind of like sped it up, but I did know that I wanted the t the pinky and the ring finger to be black with the like dragon scale design. When I did my short um, video of the stamping that I did and then the dragon scale look over the chrome, I got so many messages talking about how I did it and whatever. So like comments, messages, questions, and I had to explain it a bunch of times. So I figured I would just do a longer video of me showing you exactly what I did to get the look. Now I switched up how I did it for this video and it worked the same, um, but you do see me struggle with one of the fingers and I just wanted to kind of like walk you guys through my process of how I accomplished said Manny that you saw on the thumbnail. All right. So I've got the two done. I am going to put a second coat. That's just one coat on them right now. I am going to go ahead and put a second layer on them, but I'm going to do the second layer of all the polishes off camera because I mean, I'm using my left hand, which is my non-dominant hand. And you're getting the gist of what I'm doing with the, with the first layer. All I'm going to do is just darken it up and put a second layer on it because I mean, it just, I just wanted it to be a little more opaque because like with black, there are a lot, uh, I found a couple of blacks that are like true solid one coat coverage blacks, but I generally don't find that to be true in gel polishes uh, sometimes. Like when I'm trying a new polish, I like to use just like one layer just to see, but it wasn't quite as like dark as I was wanting with that first layer. So I was like, no biggie, I'll just do two layers. I mean, it's not a big thing because the only thing I'm going to put on top is the dragon scales with the top coat. So I just wanted it to be like super opaque. And with it being over the nude color that I have on my nails now, it was a little bit darker initially, but I like wanted that like full opaqueness. And I mean, if you have, if you only need to do one layer of gel, only do one layer because like there's no rule to do two, but some I just know that I needed to, to, to do two layers and it's not that big of a deal to me. I just do two layers. So 
I went ahead and I did the second layer um, off camera because like I said it's repetitive now I was still kind of like deciding what I was like wanting to do and I knew that the initial design had like the whole bottom half of that ring finger pink but I decided that I was gonna do like a little stripe I saw a different design that kind of like had like a break in the scales but it was just like matte and I wanted to put like this flake color right there and do like just like a line across it now I know that the flake color is like really really hard to see on camera and I tried to show it as best as I can but like it's really hard sometimes unless you hit the angle with the light just right it's just like really hard to see but I do show it at the end for you so if you just stay tuned to the end or if you want to scroll to the end by all means you can scroll to the end and check it out but I really like how this flight color looks over the black now if you put it over different colors it gives you like a different look to the colors like if you put it over pink if you turn your hand in the sun you'll be able to see like the, the reflex of it but with this particular type of flake, it looks best over like darker colors. So like over a navy blue, over a dark purple, but like over a light color like this pink, it wasn't really the vibe I was going for because I tried it on a swatch. So I was like, what else can we do to this pink? So I was like, let's chrome it because we're doing a lot of other fun stuff and the chrome that I have matches the flake color really well. And I was like, you know what, let's just do it. Let's just go all out. If we're already going to make it harder on ourselves to do this design on the dominant hand, let's just go all out and make it completely hard. I have been like trying to perfect my designs with my left hand, but I mean, it just literally takes practice. And that's why I put, make sure to put peel base underneath because it just is what it is. And if you mess up, you can just take it off. You don't have to file it off. Just pop it off. All right. So. I do zoom in when I do the this pink for the index finger. I just wanted y'all to see it's like a sheer layer on the first one. Like glow polishes are really hard to get opaque on the first layer. I haven't found one gel polish, one glow gel polish so far that is opaque on the first layer. Like it just doesn't happen. I mean, I don't if there is one, y'all can leave me a comment below and I'll definitely grab it and see, but like you don't want to put your gels too thick because then they won't cure properly. So that is a, a reason why I like to drag them thinner. And I mean, it's decently opaque. Like it could rock with one layer if you wanted like a sheer jelly type color. But I was looking for that wow. But then also if you put a second layer of a glow polish, it just gives it that much extra oomph for it to glow. So also keep that in mind when you're doing uh, polish like glow polish. Or even like glitter polish, like some glitters will be like a sheer type glitter, but if you do two layers, it gives you that nice pop. So it's really all in just like personal preference. Everything is just like whatever you want, or if you do clients, whatever they want. It's like whatever look that is wanting to be achieved in the end. So I was, a, when I first started doing this design, I was like, I don't want to just do one pink nail because that thumb is like a half pink. So I was like, I don't just want to do one pink, so that's why in my tentative design I showed you in the beginning that I drew out, it had the two pink nails. But when I got going, I was like, that little sliver of flake is not good enough. So I end up doing the middle nail black, and I put the flake over top of that. Also, y'all do see me using this orange wood stick around the edges. It is dipped in um, alcohol. Yeah, it's dipped in alcohol, and then before I cure it fully I do wipe around it with acetone just to make sure that all the gel polish is off my skin but this video is also super sped up when I'm painting them just because it takes me a really long time and black is one of those colors that is unforgiving when you get it in the cuticle like sometimes I just want to start all over again because it just does like not want to come out and then once you cure it it's like stuck there so yeah try your best to not get any gel polish on your skin because then you risk allergies and you risk getting it stuck in there and not being able to get it out for a while and then it's like you have to file it out or soak it off or any of that and it just can throw the look off so 
in addition to not being good for your skin, it can also like throw the whole look off the whole time you're wearing the nails and it might just bother you. If I flood my nails really bad with the black or red is another color that does it and so does white, like those ones for some reason don't want to ever come out of the cuticle line. Sometimes I'll just wipe off my whole nail and start over again, wipe, out, wipe it all off and clean it all out before I start over. But anyway, we are going to move along. I went ahead and cured that fully and I kind of wanted to show you the flake just a little bit so you could see it on my, my middle finger and my ring finger. This is kind of what we're looking like and I mean I could have left it like that because I think that's still really pretty. But I wanted to just keep taking it further and further and further. So I'm going to use this chrome mirror top coat. I've been loving this for chroming. There's no guessing, no playing games. It levels super nicely and it holds the chrome with a real mirror like good finish. And I have had no problems. I've been using this one for the past like two or three weeks. And I think this is probably my favorite one to chrome with. And it's already also like contaminated with the, it's not contaminated yet, I guess, with the chrome, but it is a, like a little bit, I guess, because I did two layers on one of them, so on, on a different nail. So it has a little bit of chrome already in it, but I'm going to chrome the nail anyway, so it looks fine, but it levels really easy. But a trick for this one is just to make sure, well not a trick, a necessity, is just to make sure that when you, before you cure it, you like hold your finger and like look at all the light lines in it like I'm doing, just kind of rotating it around to make sure that you don't see any lumps or bumps or dust or anything before you cure it. Otherwise the chrome will show it. So just food for thought with that one. Keep in mind with the chrome, it will, chrome and matte show all the imperfections. Now I'm just going to use the eyeshadow brush just because I mean I like to use these eyeshadow um, applicators just to get the initial bit on I don't know I cured the the mirror top coat for 30 seconds like it says on the bottle to do and then it just gives a really really good finish I finish like I like to use the eyeshadow applicator to get it all over the nail and then I like to use my finger to rub the chrome in the rest of the way just to get that finish you'll see what I mean when I start to do it it just rubs in that extra chrome that it needs and rubs off the excess chrome and you just get that super super nice finish on the chrome like you see how that little bit of wiping just gave it that gloss like even I saw it on the replay <laughs> I didn't know that it showed it like that good but it goes from like a dusty kind of look to like that super chrome and it the chrome color also gives like it's like a pink with a purple shift so it matches the pink and purple flakes. So then I was like, okay, what can I do to my pinky to make it a little bit different? So after I chrome this side of the nail, this pink side, I actually chrome over the black and it turns purple. So I thought that was a really cool look to go underneath the dragon scales. And I just felt like this, I was just doing way too much with this nail set, but it turned out really, really pretty. And I'm not usually a fan of pinks, but um, I just did a different dragon scale type look with the other color I have. So I have her other colors. I have a darker green and I have her green flakes. So I was going to do that look, but I just did a look that was similar to that. That's the only reason I didn't choose that. But she does have a blue flake or purple one of the two that just came out that I am dying to get my hands on because it is so pretty. So I'm probably going to grab that on my next order with her. Uh, Dipsters, Custom Dips owner is also named Erica, which I find to be cool. It's not spelled the same way, but the name is just as awesome. So I thought that was really, really nice. She's super sweet. Um, I don't have a code or anything for y'all. I just, she had a moving sale that was 50% off and I was, I had been eyeing her stuff for a while. So I was like, you know what, let me go ahead and grab some stuff. So I grabbed some clear rubber base. I grabbed this black. I grabbed this pink, obviously, and the flakes. Obviously, because I'm using them in this video. I grabbed a green. I grabbed another glow-in-the-dark color. And then I grabbed the other flakes. That was what I grabbed at the time. So not too, too much. But I've been loving everything that I've been using so far. I've tried out a couple of the other colors. And they're really, really pretty. But... This was the look I was going for, and I think it turned out amazing in the end. So, give her website a check. It will be linked in the description box for you. 
sorry I don't have a code, but I know some of the other girls if um, have a code. If you're wanting to use a discount code, I know there's a code uh, Mary10, M-A-R-Y-10, if you guys would like to have a discount code. It's not my code, but that's one I can share with you as a good friend of mine. Um, also, back to the nails. I am curing this chrome top coat for 30 seconds before I am rubbing the chrome in. 30 seconds is the perfect time. I haven't had zero issue. I don't cure it for any longer because I don't need to, but... 30 seconds and it's ready to rub the chrome in and then I just dust off the excess and then for this look I just made sure to put a base coat on top of it instead of just going in with the top coat since I was doing the dragon scale look on top of it. So I'm going back in and giving all the nails just a quick little wipe just to make sure that all the nails are good to go make sure the chrome is everywhere that I want it to be and like I was really surprised going through this nail set like how I was doing with my left hand three years ago I did not even think that this was going to be a possibility because I could do nothing with my left hand but I just kept at it because I was like you know what one day I will be able to do an amazing design on my right hand because the right hand was always looking ugly like it's the one that just did all the designs did all the work and got like no beautification for doing so so I just like wanted to practice doing my right hand and I think I've come a long way in three years so here's where we are at I was trying to like decide what I was going to do really from here so I decided to put a base coat on top of all the colors um, just because you want to do like a rubber base or a base coat but I didn't want to contaminate my rubber base so I just put a base coat on and I wiped the tacky layer off and then I went and got my kitchen bubbles. All I did was I put some Dawn soap in a container and I let it run super high speed so it made these bubbles. And then I scooped the bubbles and put them in this little cup. This is like a plant watering cup. But I put them in this cup. I'm making sure that the nails are nice and clean before I go in with the top coat. Now I don't have the Dipsters base and top coat because she was out during the sale. So I need to grab those for sure. But until then we are going to be using Model 1's top coat. And to do this look. All right, I don't think I speed it up too fast when I do this. I think I leave it pretty regular speed so y'all can see what I'm doing. So, actually I don't use that one. I use the Model 1's base coat. For the top coat, I, like, I wanted to use the 915 Aesthetics top coat. This is probably one of my favorites. I like this top coat a lot. And it lasts very well, does not chip or anything. So, all right, so what you do is you put the top coat on the nail let me see which one I do first. Okay, I'm doing the pinky. All right, so you want to put the top coat on the nail. And you want to make sure that you're getting the entire place you want all of the, um, the bubbles to be. So, excuse me. I'm thinking and watching my daughter. I'm outside watching them. All right. So, got distracted. You want to put the top coat everywhere you want the bubbles to be because it will, once you cure it, the top coat will cure with the bubbles and it will like hold the look in. So put your top coat everywhere that you want it. And then I grabbed this cuticle pusher to like put the bubbles on. But for me, this just was like not working because you don't want the bubbles to like pop and dissolve while you're placing them on the nail. You don't want the bubbles to not be on the whole nail because then the look won't be over the entire nail. Um, also, it is made with water as well, so it'll like start to pop and dissolve and then be liquidy and stuff. So after playing around with this look for a while with that, I was like, you know what? This is just like not working because you have to have the bubbles like form like a big, like, I don't know, like when you're in the bath when you were a kid and you just had bubbles all over your hands that's kind of like the look you're going for but you want it to be everywhere because if there's no but if there's not bubbles on the nail where you want them to be when you go to cure it it's not going to be in the design so you want to try to keep the bubbles on the whole nail on the uncured gel but you got to be careful to not touch the gel as well by this point I was getting so frustrated so I was like you know what I'm just going to dip my whole finger into the bubble container the bubble cup and that worked out so well I wish I had just done that in the beginning <laughs> and then you immediately want to cure the nail 
And then when you take your finger out, you just take some alcohol on a lint-free wipe and just wipe off the excess bubbles and you are left with the design. Now, for the ring finger, it's going to be a little bit different because I don't want the bubbles to be on top of the flake part. So I just make sure to put it on all of the solid black part and then I will go back later and individually like separately I guess top coat that flake part so that it sticks out because I'm also going to line it with gold striping tape so it really like stands out a lot better um, but to get the bottom part I just use a small liner brush I think this is like a nine millimeter liner brush and I just put the top coat at the bottom where I want the flakes to be or where I want the dragon scale design to be as well that's all I'm doing I put a little bit of the top coat on this little paper palette that I can just throw away and I just fill in that bottom area. And then when I get, when I'm happy with all of the top coat design, like area covered where like all the bubbles are gonna be, I take my nail and I dip it into the container because I feel like that worked so, so well. And then after I do that and I get all the bubbles all over the nail, I go ahead and I place my hand directly in the lamp. Like you want to get it before the bubbles start to pop because they will pop and you just want to make sure that you cover it completely. Now I just wipe off the excess again with some alcohol and some and a lint free wipe or aka paper towel. And then if you have any excess hanging off like that side over there, you see a little bit of top coat hanging off. I'm just going to file that later, like file to fix the shape near the end. Sorry, I keep getting close to the thing because I'm trying to see and the sun is glaring in my phone. I'm trying to spend some time outside today, get some sunshine because it's been raining for like the past few days. And I'm trying to see what's going on watching my kids. My older two are outside playing while the babies nap. So lots of things going on right here. All right, so I went ahead and I put that top coat on that nail. And I'm going to go ahead, I'm making sure to cure, like that's the thing, especially when I'm doing this hand, I want to make sure to cure everything as I'm going along because it just, I'm a disaster sometimes and I just like to make sure that I get everything all taken care of. And like I'm not able to bump anything or mess anything up because what I hate worse than doing it um, and messing it up is having to do it two and three and four times, like that really starts to bother me and I start to want to give up. So I like to cure as soon as I get it where I want. Even when I'm hand painting my art, I just, I, I flash cure a lot because if I get one line right, I will cure it because if I mess up my next one, I won't have to go back and redo the whole thing all over again. All right. So I went ahead and I cured that. I scooped, I put the top coat on, I scooped the bubbles on, placed it in the lamp for 30 seconds and I wipe off the bubbles. All right. So I'm like, okay, we're looking good got all the dragon nails how I want them then now it's time to go ahead and like um what I was telling you I just file the edges just because they're a little bit of top coat kind of fell over the edge and some of the bubbles pushed some of the top coat on the sides and it just got it to where I like it messed up the nail shape just a little bit so now I'm just going to go ahead and just clean up the edges and just make sure that it's like back to shape everything's looking good anything that's like super sticking up like if there's like a weird spot on the bubble that's like sticking up weird in the top coat I just like file it down just a little bit but you really want to be careful because in doing this design you don't want to file on top of the bubbles because then you'll just scratch up the design and I'm not going to put another top coat on the design at all this is it like I'm just like basically finish filing the only part that I'm going to put a top coat on at the end is going to be the flake part when I put the striping tape because I have to seal the striping tape in and the whole flake nail so the index finger the middle finger the flake part and then the side of the thumb that has the pink on it those are the only sides that are going to get a top coat because they haven't obviously gotten a top coat yet all right we got our filing done. Everything is back to shape. Everything's looking good. And I'm just going to clean my hand off camera with some um, isopropyl alcohol just to make sure that everything is like all the dust is wiped off. And I was deciding whether I wanted to do gold or silver. And I immediately decided on gold uh, striping tape because I just feel like it would give it that oomph. I saw a design that I was like super loving for the... Uh, 
for the thumb and I had to do it. Now they didn't have like it done the same way that I'm doing it now, but it was similar to this design. And then I was like, you know what? I have to do that. So as y'all watch me struggle with this striping tape with my, with my non-dominant hand, this is basically what I do with the striping tape. I make sure I try to put down a base coat and I cure it and I wipe the tacky layer off because the striping tape sticks to a base coat. It also sticks to activator if you're using dip powder. It sticks really well. So then I just push it down. I have no problems with my striping tape ever. Like I never have any issues with any design that I do. I never have any issues with it peeling because at the bottom I cut it just shy of my cuticle line so that the top coat will fully encapsulate that and when I'm filing I file it off to where I when I cap the edge I will fully cap the over the end of the striping tape so that it doesn't peel up through my top coat and I have no issues with it even with it being on the tip of my finger we are for me wearing this set I was on day four before I took it off and no chipping, no lifting, no nothing. So this video I had to post a little bit later because I did it really early and I had a set date and I didn't realize how far away that date was. So by the time you see this one, I already have this one off, but I really loved how it turned out and yeah, I was really struggling with the striping tape. But anyway, I picked a different size to do kind of like a drop down and then I'm going to end up putting a rhinestone there. But I put the rhinestone, since it's going to be a super, super small one, a SS, smallest size. I don't know what that number is, but whatever the smallest size stone is for, like, gems or whatever. Uh, rhinestones. I don't know the proper sizes because I'm not a nail tech and I don't have to remember this stuff. I just know it's a small one. I put it on the end of the striping tape. So it looks like uh, a hanging little ball thing on the end I just thought it was it looked cool in the design when I saw it I saw that part and I was like oh that looks really cool I'm gonna try that so I did and I liked it but I just since it's so small I don't have to use like a rhinestone glue for it for those little teeny tiny ones I just put it in a layer of top coat because all I'm and then also with the thumb y'all saw I put the striping tape over the black and I like pushed it down in it because I wanted to give the striping tape like the texture of the dragon scale now you can chrome that with like uh, you can do like top coat and then you can do like a chrome over it but like that's too much work I could just use striping tape <laughs> for this design and it sticks really well so I was really happy with that and then I was like you can't really see the flakes on the other nail so I decided to go ahead and border them with some gold striping tape as well this is I feel like it just brought it gave it that something extra and I left in me kind of struggling with the striping tape a little bit just because I'm using my, some people call it opposite hand, I just call it non-dominant hand. And I just, I don't know, left it in so you guys could see that I don't know, it's not, everything's not always as easy as it appears. Sometimes it takes a little bit of, a little bit of trying. Also with the striping tape, just get a little bit of excess. It's not going nowhere. That roll is like 20 feet long for no reason. So you're never going to use all of it. So just get you a good bit that hangs over the edges. You want it to hang over both edges so that you can place it exactly where you need it. Do not be scared or shy to get a little bit excess. You want if, if you need like a half an inch to an inch hanging over, do it. Like it's better to have too much than too little because then you have to cut another piece anyway. So just keep that in mind as well. Striping tape. Some people hate it, but once you figure out how to use it it is so easy and so fun it can just add that extra oomph if you cannot draw a straight line the, the, the tape is already straight so all you have to do is put it on so this is how we're looking and i was like you know what i'm happy with that so now it's time to move everything out of the way because i'm making a huge mess and all that's left to really do is what is going on up there is that a squirrel the squirrels are running to the top of the trees, knocking pine cones down, <laughs> landing near the kids. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make sure to get all of the that uh, right side of that nail. Like, I want to cover all of the pink, cap the edge, but I also want to make sure that I am getting completely covering and getting the full edge of that striping taped along the center. 
I need to make sure that I get the other side of it completely because I don't want it to even be peeling up from that other side and I want it to be super glossy. So I want to go all the way to the edge, but I don't want to get it so far as to cover up the dragon scale on the other side because I want all of that texture and I want it to stay with the look that it has. And once you start top coating the dragon scales, they're obviously going to lose their texture because the top coat is going to like fall into all those crevices and stuff and like make it not be textured anymore so just be careful when you're doing that design if you're doing like a half nail like this here is the little stone I'm just putting it in the top coat and I do cure this nail separately I can go ahead and I cure it for 30 seconds after I get the stone placed exactly where I want it so the stone doesn't wander and so the nail is completely taken care of plus it's always a good rule of thumb to do your a good rule of thumb to do your thumb separately just so that it cures properly and holds at the right angle for you so the top coat's not sliding or moving around or anything so that's why I did the thumb separately now I'm going to do the same thing I did with the striping tape on the other nail now I really want to make sure that I'm carefully applying the striping tape or the top coat on top of the striping tape because I want to cover it completely um, on the edges um, and on the sidewalls because if you don't do that then the striping tape will peel up and it will mess up the design so I did that part and then I went ahead and cured that because like I said I don't like any chance of bumping anything and then I go ahead and cure it for about 15 seconds just a good flash cure so nothing will move or anything and then I top coat the middle finger and I top coat the index finger as well and then I go ahead and I cure them but I was like man that index finger is looking kind of lonely it doesn't have anything on it it has no pizzazz I mean it's got chrome but I need to tie it in with the rhinestone because that one lonely rhinestone on a thumb just like isn't enough so I don't apply the rhinestones on camera because well I did but I did not hit record apparently so I don't have the footage of me doing that but I use the same stones that I used on my thumb and I just use a big stone. I, there's three different sizes that come in that little pack. I use the biggest one in the center, two of the medium ones, and then two of the smaller ones. So it's a cluster of five stones on a cuticle line of the index finger. I did apply it with uh, rhinestone glue on top of the top coat, but I did not re top coat it. I just put it on with the rhinestone glue and just like called it a day because it was good enough for me and that's all that matters. You can re-top coat it if you want or you can do it the way that I did it. I also don't top coat my stones because I don't, just don't leave them on long enough to get them chipped or anything. But look at how that looks, y'all. I love how this turned out. I went ahead and I put cuticle oil on or cuticle milk on there, which is the same thing as a cuticle oil, like a lotion type thing. And I love how it turned out. And again, these are the three colors that I used. I would definitely check out Dipster's Custom Dips uh, gel polishes. So I went ahead and I definitely got a video outside because y'all know I've been loving to show y'all the outside looks. Here is how it looks outside. I am obsessed with this. I will have to try it again with the green one because I love it. And I think the thumb is my favorite nail. I wish I'd have done that on at least another nail. But Thank you guys so much for spending some of your day with me. I know this was a longer video, but I really wanted to show y'all this design and I'm so glad it turned out good. <laughs> if y'all have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments section for me and I will catch y'all in the next video.